Hi, welcome at the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. My name is Bram Donders, I'm a junior curator and I will give you a tour today um, at the Van Gogh Museum. Um, we are very glad to have the invitation to speak at the TechFest Bombay. Um, here at the Van Gogh Museum we do a lot of technical research on the works of Vincent van Gogh. Uh, but today I will give you a more art, art historical tour at the Van Gogh Museum. And we start here in this room full of self-portraits. Van Gogh uh, painted a lot of self-portraits uh, for some different reasons. Because it's very cheap. Van Gogh didn't have a lot of money. And to paint yourself instead of a model, that's much more effici efficient than, than hiring a model. So he made a lot of self-portraits. And here, at these self-portraits, you can see the evolution of the art of Vincent van Gogh. Um, what most people don't know is that Van Gogh only was a painter for 10 years of his life. When he was 27, he started with painting, and till his death in 1890. Um, and here, from a dark palette at the left, to a much brighter style with brighter colors and much more light. And I will give you more explanation about that in the other rooms, but this is a very nice way to start with the art of Vincent van Gogh. From a dark palette to a light, modern palette. And yeah, I think in these self-portraits you can already see van Gogh as one of the most famous modern artists. What is very interesting about the 19th century is, is that the time when van Gogh lived, is that there were very a lot of technical discoveries, such as uh, paint in a tube, um, which was invented in the 19th century. And uh, because uh, of the tube, uh, the painters didn't have to mix their own pigments, but they can already use them outdoors. And that was very new. You didn't have to paint in your studio, but you can, could go outdoors to the mountains, to the rivers and paint what you saw. And that's very new for the 19th century. And that's also what Vincent van Gogh did. He went out and painted the nature. And you will see that in the next rooms. Um, what's very interesting about the Van Gogh Museum uh, is, is that the museum isn't that old. It was only opened in 1973. And the museum building was designed by Gerrit Rietveld. And maybe you can see it in here that uh, the museum building very resembles the Guggenheim in New York. And Rietveld, which is also a very famous uh, Dutch architect and designer, um, was inspired by the Guggenheim. So, let's get upstairs. So what I already told is that Vincent only began painting when he was 27, which was uh, rather uh, old for a painter to begin with painting. But it was for Van Gogh, uh, he had some other jobs before he was a painter. He was a, a preacher in Belgium. He was working at an art dealer in London. But only at 27 he thought, okay, I really want to paint. And he did that with the advice of his brother, Van Gogh had a really good relationship with his brother, Theo van Gogh, who was also an art dealer in Paris. Um, and here you see all the artists van Gogh really, um, actually the models of van Gogh. What van Gogh wanted to do is become a painter of peasants, which was very popular in the 80s. Uh, van Gogh painted, uh, started with painting in the 1880 and and what you see here is the typically uh, paintings of that period. Van Gogh really wanted to paint the peasant people, the real people, not the city-like folks, the Parisians, but really the, yeah, the folks outdoors who re really, really are doing the work. So these are a few of his models. You see here is uh, L'Hermite, who was a salon painter, very famous in Paris, Bastien Lepage, and Van Gogh also wanted to become one of them but then in his own style. So, um, Van Gogh started in 1888 and he went back to his parents, parents in Brabant, which is a province in the south of the Netherlands. 
And in Brabant, there were a lot of, uh, it was a rural area and there were a lot of peasants. And in the village where his parents live, there was also a little yeah, a peasant community. And his father was a Protestant minister at that village. Uh, and Van Gogh could paint there uh, uh, the peasants of Nune, which is the village. Um, when Van Gogh started, he couldn't paint that good. He wasn't a natural talent, but he learned on his own. He had some books uh, with uh, uh, some uh, exercises, which he did a lot. And he also had a nephew-in-law, a cousin-in-law, Alton Mauve, who was a really famous Dutch artist. And Mauve told Van Gogh, you have to begin with still lives because that's the easiest thing to do and begin with painting. You can uh, exercise with color contrast, with shadows, with lights, and that's what Van Gogh is doing in the beginning of his, of his uh, career as an artist, painting still lives. In 8086, Van Gogh decides to go to Antwerp, which is a city in Belgium, and he goes there to the Ac Academy of Arts, but he thinks it's too old fashioned, so he decides to go to Paris. And in Paris, it's the center of the art world. And also his brother, Theo van Gogh, lives there. And Theo is an art dealer, so he produced Vincent to the modern avant-garde art world of Paris. And then you can see a very uh, large uh, difference between his works from Brabant and then his works from Paris. And in this room, the Parisian room, you can see uh, van Gogh influences. Here you see all these impressionist paintings. So Van Gogh coming from the Netherlands and to Paris and he see, sees all these bright works, colorful works, and he's really influenced by them. So here you see works by Pizarro, by Claude Monet, Edgar Degas, Manet, And Van Gogh visits the Impressionist exhibition of 86, where he sees all these modern artworks. And the Impressionists painted landscapes, but they also painted more modern subjects like cafe interiors, prostitutes. Um, uh, and here Van Gogh also paint a more modern subject, which is a cafe interior with a glass of absinthe. Um, and you can see also here that it's much different than the still lives in his early days. It's a very bright palette. The, uh, the strokes are very different, more smaller, not the very thick uh, uh, layers of paint. And Van Gogh sees the new modern things like the Impressionists, but there were also a new avant-garde form, which was Pointeism, also Neo-Impressionism. And his friends, Seurat and Signac, uh, were the founders of them. And Van Gogh was also very intrigued by this style, but he didn't know if he wanted to paint in that style. But we can see an experiment with this Pointeism, a flirtation with it in this painting. And this painting is his view from his apartment. When Van Gogh arrives in Paris, he, uh, he goes to Theo and, he go, and they live together for a couple of years. And here you see Van Gogh uh, is also uh, painting in lines, but more he's painting with little dots of colors, with, in contrasting colors. So if you are very close, you can see that they are very little dots, but if you go a little bit further, you can see all these dots blending in together. And that's really the essence of Pointeism or Neo-Impressionism. Uh, in Paris, Van Gogh wasn't, he was already a much better painter, but he still had to, had to use some, uh, um, some helps and you can see it here. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there are some lines in the painting. There is a line over here and a line over here. And he used a perspective frame. 
He made, it, he made one himself and he sometimes ordered them. And those were frames, just like the frame of the, uh, maybe a little bit smaller, the frame of the painting. And there were lines in them. So they were crossing lines. And he also, he uh, put one in front of him so he can see through it with these lines. And he also drawed one of them on his canvas. So he could combinate his view with these lines. And what he saw, he could put it on the canvas. So it's much easier if you have some guidance in your view to put it on canvas. And that you can still you see in the painting. Also on infrared, you can see it much better. Um, we can go to, uh, here's a painting by Sinyak. And you can see he was a friend of Van Gogh's and they painted together on the, uh, alongside the river uh, in Anjere, the Seine. And here is, you can see also this Pointeism. But this is Sinyak, a friend of him. Van Gogh wasn't very happy with his Pointeism, but he, uh, when he painted in Pointeism, he got some really more modern techniques, but he decides to go completely different and go more like his art and style with more broad, uh, more uh, brush strokes. And you can see here, this is Agostina Segatori, which was his mistress. And she had a cafe in Montmartre and the cafe was called Le Tambourin. And what I think is very nice, it, the seats and the tables were little tambourines. And Van Gogh had a love affair with her. And it was also at this cafe, Le Tambourin, that Van Gogh uh, exposed his works. Uh, he sometimes uh, put it, his uh, paintings on the wall so people could buy them, but there was, he wasn't that popular, so he also had to stop them, stop that. And then afterwards, he suddenly says, um, I'm done with Paris. It's, the steaks are terrible, the wine is terrible, uh, the city is terrible, it's much, too much pressure on him, so he decides to go to Arles in the south of France. Let's go to Arles. Because of COVID, the normal passage to the museum is a little bit different, but we can skip that. <laughs> so, he goes to Arles in the beginning of 8088, and when he comes there, he's painting landscapes, the blossom, the orchards. And it's, it is in Arles that he really finds his own style. Most of the highlights of his career are painted here, like the bedroom, the sunflowers, uh, night terrace in Arles. And in Arles, he's starting to paint with more expressive colors. So uh, here you can see these thick lines of primary colors. And what is also very interesting to know is that these paintings, norm, when he painted them, they were much more bright and more expressive. But um, because of the time and the lights, some of the colors faded. Uh, one of these colors is Geranium Lake. Uh, which was invented in only 18, 1883. Uh, so it was a very modern uh, painting. And Vroeg also knew that that type of red, geranium lake is a red pigment, that it's fading, but he applied it very thickly. So he thought maybe it's not fading in my paintings, but we know that unfortunately, most of these purple red colors are a little bit faded. And that's why also, maybe you already see it, but in the museum, it's a little bit darker than regularly in museums, but that's to uh, keep the, uh, to conserve it, the paintings at the, the highest, best conditions. And in Arlie, he's starting to paint the surroundings. It's a very, it's a very beautiful, uh, it's a very beautiful surroundings with all these wheat fields, uh, Arles is very small and very cozy, very, uh, it's very picturesque. 
And here you can see one of these, his masterpieces from his early period. You can see the harvest. It's the, um, it's, this is what you see is Le Grau, which was a, uh, a valley near Arles. And what you see is that Van Gogh really um, used bright colors, the blues, the, the yellows, the greens. And that's a very modern painting because it's, you have these color fields, these lines. It's very geometrical. And I think this is, this is one of the most beautiful paintings of his. Yeah, let's go through the Zouave. In Arles, Van Gogh really wanted to paint uh, portraits. And here you can see an old uh, woman of Arles, and here you can see the Zouave. Also in Arles, it was very difficult for Van Gogh to find models who weren't that expensive. But this guy, a military guy, uh, wanted to uh, be a model of Van Gogh. And in here, in here, you can see that Van Gogh is really modern. You can see the contrast of the right, of, of the, the red, sorry, and the greens, which is very contrasting. And these, this, it's, you can't imagine, but this must be very radical for uh, his contemporaries to see this, this green field uh, behind this man and then these bricks. It's, it's very modern and very, uh, very, yeah, it's very ambitious for him to paint such expressive colors and with expressive forms. Although, uh, it, although now it's very modern, Van Gogh wasn't very happy about this. He thought it was too, he called it ugly. But I think it's also a very wonderful, very wonderful painting. One of the main things Van Gogh decided to go to Arles was because of the bad food and the pressure in Paris. But he also wanted to go to the south of France because he thought it was like Japan. Um, in uh, Van Gogh's living time, there was a very great fascination for Japan and Japanese art. And Van Gogh was very influenced by Japanese prints, also called ukiyo-e. And he copied them, as you can see here. You can see here the flowering plum orchards, which he painted after a print by Hiroshige. And Van Gogh was really intrigued by their uh, colors and their color fields. In Japanese art, you don't have uh, shadows. You only have uh, more co contour lines uh, with in their uh, color fields and no shadow. And Van Gogh was really intrigued by them. And he thought uh, Japanese art was more like a modern art. It was maybe the future and he was very influenced by it. And what is also interesting to know is that we still have Van Gogh's collection of Japanese art prints and this is one of them. We always have one Japanese print in the galleries. Uh, and it was owned by Vincent van Gogh himself. And he bought them in Paris. And first he thought to uh, sell them, but then he wasn't quite successful to see, so he decided to uh, keep them for himself. And this painting is also after a print by Hiroshige. It's Bridge in the Rain. And what is also very interesting to know that these uh, Japanese signs over here, those aren't reals. It's just some gibberish. Van Gogh um, copied Japanese uh, signs, but they aren't saying anything, anything normal. He puts them together in a very random order. And so Van Gogh knew something about Japanese art, but he wasn't, <laughs> he couldn't speak Japanese. He never went to Japan. And in Arles, he thought, that's the closest I can go to Japan. And also this painting is a combination of several prints he had in his own collection. This frog is from a different print. And this lady, this guy, Shan, he copied it, copied it after a, a French journal, which was about Japanese prints. So it's a very random selection of typical elements from several prints which he uh, brought together in one painting.
and in this painting next to it, the boat. It isn't a copy of the Japanese prints, but you can see that Van Gogh um, made the Japanese style his own. You can see it in these contour lines in the boat, these color fields, there's no shadow. Um, and I think it's also really beautiful. Another painting uh, in which you can see the influence of Japanese art is the famous sunflowers. Uh, Van Gogh made the sunflowers for his home in Arles, um, the yellow house. And in Arles, Van Gogh wanted to uh, uh, start a studio, the studio of the South. And he invited several painters to come to Arles to paint together and make modern art. And one of the painters who really come, came was Paul Gauguin. And he made these sunflowers for the bedroom of Paul Gauguin. He even made five of them, five sunflowers, to decorate his home. And it's a very nice experiment in colors. He used a very, uh, very f uh, a lot of yellow tones to, yeah, to paint this painting. And in this painting, you can see Van Gogh really is a modern painter and he's a really professional painter. What is interesting, when Van Gogh started to paint these uh, sunflowers, he, had, uh, he thought the upper side of the painting was too short. So he added a little stroke of canvas, which you can still see. You can see a, you can see a line over there and it was added just to have a little bit more space upon the sunflower, so the composition would be uh, better than it was. And at the Yellow House, as you probably know, Van Gogh had his, has it, had his first uh, physical breakdown. Um, the pressure in the studio of the South was very high because Van Gogh wanted to paint together with Gauguin and make modern art, but they weren't, they were arguing a lot because Van Gogh wanted to, paint, wanted to paint what he saw and Gauguin thought, I want to paint with my mind. I want to paint what I think of, what I, more symbolic way to paint. And Van Gogh really wanted to paint what he saw, like he saw the sunflowers and he wanted to paint them, not from his head. And they argued and argued and argued about them. And then Van Gogh uh, got his first uh, physical breakdown and he cut it off his hair and uh, he gave it to prostitutes and Gauguin leaves the yellow house thinking like this is a madman I have to go far away from here so uh, Gauguin goes to Paris back again and Theo Van Gogh, Vincent's brother uh, comes to the yellow house and they decide that it's better for Van Gogh to go to Saint-Rémy de Provence which was a, a asylum uh, where he could be treated for his mental illness so let's go to uh, Saint-Rémy. Let's go upstairs to Saint-Rémy. So after he cut off his ear, he was put in a hospital in Arle for a few, a couple of months. And then he went to Saint-Rémy in the asylum. And he went there on his own will, so he wasn't forced to go there, but Theo and Van Gogh and Vincent <laughs> thought it was better to be treated in a in an atmosphere that was really, yeah, for physical illness. But also in Saint-Rémy, Van Gogh had some several physical uh, breakdowns, mental breakdowns, and, but Van Gogh kept painting, and that was very stimulant to go through, to go on and on and on and paint. And this is one of these masterpieces from the Saint-Rémy period. You can see the garden of the asylum. The asylum was situated in an old monastery. And it was, there was a large wall around the garden, so people couldn't go away from the asylum. And this painting is, uh, Next to his beauty, also very symbolic because 
there is a, a guy with a, a site, which is a symbol for death. So I already was thinking about death and art and what he, he was really thinking about his life in the asylum. And this painting shows really his, his own typical style with these very vividly brush strokes. His, yeah, it's almost like he smashed it on the painting. And it is also, yeah, it's, 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 it's so beautiful. So, Verhoek was also still influenced by Japanese art, also in Saint-Rémy-de-Provence. And in Saint-Rémy-de-Provence, Verhoek start, starts to paint these little canvases with details of nature, which was also very common in Japanese prints. And he painted just, yeah, you can imagine looking down in the garden and just see this, this uh, roses, the butterflies, and it's a very stylized, um, stylized painting with these also these contour lines, also these color fields, and also in Saint-Rémy van Gogh also became very interested in nature and depicting nature and depicting these little things in life. This is also made in the garden of the asylum. You can see all these little dots with colors and you see this undergrowth of trees. And in the back, you can see the sun shining through the, through the leaves. And at the end, you can also see the wall of the asylum. So it's still enclosed by all these walls, but still very admiring nature and what he's having in the asylum. And also in the asylum he's painting still lives. And also this one, which pretty resembles the sunflowers, is an experimentation with colors. The blue greens, the yellows. In the asylum, Foucault had good times and bad times. And when he was having a mental breakdown, he couldn't paint, but when he had was better, he painted a lot of paintings. One of these paintings is this Garden of the Asylum. And it's a very expressive painting with a lot of colors. And I think he really uh, expresses himself with his painting. And also, may, you maybe think these colors are made up. But this is really what Vincent saw. In Arlie, you sometimes have this very uh, beautiful uh, skies with different colors in the in the air and really did paint what he saw and this painting is very monumental it's also a very large size and when you look at these figures they're so small if you compare them with the gigantic trees so that's give that gives the painting a really monumental character also with the expressive colors and the also the typically van gogh brush strokes the really almost smashed on the painting in primary colors another masterpiece he makes in saint remy de provence is the almond blossom which is really popular and you can see it already over there Uh, interested by the blossoms in the, in the, in the area of Saint-Rémy and he painted them several times. And this one is very interesting because of the perspective. He is, you can imagine, uh, lying underneath a tree and just looking above you and you see this view, this blossom and the bright blue sky. And what is very nice is that Van Gogh painted this painting for his nephew, his little nephew, 
Theo, his brother, uh, was married and had a child when Vincent was in the asylum. And Vincent decides to paint this for his nephew to hang it in the bedroom. And also blossoms is a symbol for new life, a new beginning. So it's a very symbolic painting for Van Gogh. And the painting, most of the flowers look white, but they weren't originally. And they were more pink. And also in this painting, there is much discolorization. Imagine all these flowers being as pink as this one, or maybe even brighter. But unfortunately, because of the light and the bad quality of the painting Van Gogh used, they turn into white flowers, which is still beautiful. But imagine that it's even more beautiful. Because of the birth of his nephew, Van Gogh decides to uh, move to Auvers-sur-Oise, which is very close to Paris. And in Auvers-sur-Oise, Van Gogh is treated by Dr. Gachet, who is a painter himself. And because of being in Auvers-sur-Oise, Theo can visit uh, Vincent more regularly, and Vincent can also go to Paris more regularly. And here you see Auvers-sur-Oise. It's a very uh, picturesque village uh, outside of Paris. And in this painting, you can see a very interesting combination between the expressive style with these expressive brush strokes, the color fields almost geometrically, and in the upper part, more serenity. So it's a perfect harmony between expressiveness, colors, and it's a beautiful painting. And in Auvergne, Van Gogh uses these normal uh, canvases, but he's also starting to use these panoramic canvases. Uh, we call them double tiles because they are 50 centimeters uh, on both sides and they are double. And most people think this painting is Van Gogh's last painting, but it isn't. Um, and many people think that because it's very dark. You have these dark clouds, the crowds are all flying. Um, you can get a very anxious feeling if you see the painting and you can imagine that Van Gogh painting this, he was in a very bad mood, very, he had bad thoughts, he was not feeling well. And all these feelings you can see in this painting, very dark, very, very sensible, but also besides being very dramatic, very beautiful, these expressive brush strokes also, <laughs> again and again, these brush strokes and these expressive colors. Um, but as I already stated, it is, this isn't his last painting. We know that that painting, that almost abstract painting of three roots, is his last paintings. We know from a letter from Andries Bonger, who was his brother-in-law, that um, at his easel, there was a painting of tre Tree Roots, his last work. And this abstract painting is Tree Roots, when you see in the forest or something like that, you see it's the bottom part of the tree, which is slightly on a hill. And a couple of months ago, um, the place of where this painting was painting was discovered in Auvers sur Oise, which was really exciting. And it was discovered by Wouter van Veen. And it's very, it's very typical that this painting, his last painting is such abstract because in here you can see Vincent was really, really a modern painting and uh, far ahead of his time. And when this painting was still on the easel, uh, later Van Gogh shot himself in the chest. And a couple of days later, he died, unfortunately. And he left 850 paintings um, to his brother, Theo Van Gogh, who unfortunately died a couple of months later himself. And then his wife, the wife of Theo, Jo Van Gogh, inherited all these paintings, all these drawings, all his letters. And then she decides Van Gogh is a brilliant artist. He's a modern artist and the world must know about Vincent Van Gogh. 
and she's starting to organize exhibition all over the world from the United States to Japan. And then Vincent becomes one of the most famous painters of the world. And after the dying of Jo, uh, her son, uh, Vincent Willem, the same nephew as this painting was dedicated to, uh, opens the Volk Museum in 1973. And that's amazing because still here we are with all his works, all his paintings, and he's still, uh, we still remember him till this day. So that was our tour at the Van Gogh Museum. Many thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the Techfest Bombay and we we'll hope to welcome you here in the future in Amsterdam at the Van Gogh Museum. Thank you.